why Satan fought for Moses' body. In human history, few figures stand as prominently as Moses, from a prince to a shepherd who later turned prophet, who would defy an empire, lead a nation, and become the conduit for the divine law that has shaped civilizations. Born into a world where his very breath was an act of rebellion, Moses emerged from the reeds of the Nile River, saved from certain death by the very family that sought to terminate his life. The story of this man is not only one of liberation and law, but also one cloaked in profound mysteries. The Days of Moses His life was marked by the miraculous. So, too, was his departure from this world. Deuteronomy recounts, Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak nor his strength gone. Deuteronomy 34.7 And most mysterious of all, no one knows his burial place to this day. Deuteronomy 34.6 A life that began shrouded in secrecy seems to end in much the same way. So who was this man, Moses? Why was his life and death ensnared in riddles? As we unravel his story, we embark on a journey not just through history, but into the heart of faith, mystery, and divine purpose. Are you ready to discover the legend that is Moses? Why was Moses so important to Satan? Moses was destined to be the liberator of the Hebrews, God's chosen people. By leading them out of Egypt and into the Promised Land, he was setting the stage for the eventual coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Satan, always opposed to God's plans, saw Moses as a threat. If Moses could be stopped, perhaps the broader divine plan could be thwarted. In the grand cosmic struggle between good and evil, Moses was a key player. His story reminds us that no matter our past, no matter our mistakes, God has a plan for each of us. And no force, not even Satan, can stand against it when we walk in faith. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Hebrews 11, 24 through 25. Moses' death. Moses was the man who almost took a whole nation to their promised land, but couldn't make it at the last minute. The story of Moses is both inspiring and mysterious, and his departure from this world is perhaps one of the most touching moments in biblical history. He was the great leader of the Israelites and had spent decades guiding his people through the wilderness. He had faced off against the mighty Pharaoh, parted the Red Sea, and received the Ten Commandments at the top of Mount Sinai. Yet, after all his incredible feats and the tests of faith he overcame, he was not permitted to enter the Promised Land with the people he had so diligently led. Why Moses didn't enter the Promised Land Moses, the great leader who had guided them out of Egypt, felt the weight of the people's expectations. God had been with them every step of the way, providing manna from heaven and water from rocks. But on this particular day, at the waters of Meribah, Moses' frustrations took the best of him. The people complained, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? Exodus 17.3 Moved by their cries, Moses turned to God, seeking guidance. The Lord spoke to him, saying, Take the staff, and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. Numbers 28 But as Moses faced the crowd, anger clouded his judgment. Instead of speaking to the rock as God had instructed, he struck it twice with his staff, and water gushed forth. While the people rejoiced at the miracle before them, God's voice echoed in Moses' ear because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites. You will not bring this community into the land I give them. Numbers 2012. On the plains of Moab, with the Jordan Valley spread out before him, Moses climbed Mount Nebo. From there, God showed him the vast expanse of the promised land, from Gilead to Dan, a land flowing with milk and honey, a place that the Israelites had dreamt of for generations. Moses, with his own eyes, beheld the beauty of this land, but he also understood that he would never set forth there. The Bible tells us, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. 
and he buried him in the Valley of the Land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his grave to this day. Deuteronomy 34, 5 through 6. God himself took care of Moses in his final moments, a testament to the special bond they shared. But the most intriguing part is the burial. No monument, no grand tomb, no shrine to visit. In a manner befitting the humility Moses often displayed, his final resting place remains a mystery. Hidden by God, untouched by man, the location of Moses' grave is one of the Bible's unsolved riddles. The Dispute The Epistle of Jude is a short yet powerful message, urging believers to stand firm in their faith and to contend earnestly for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. After the death of Moses, a dispute arose over his body. Satan, the adversary, saw an opportunity. He approached the place where the body lay. Jude, in an attempt to motivate the faithful, recalls various events and individuals from the Old Testament. Among these captivating narratives, there's a particularly mysterious event mentioned. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Jude 1 9. While we don't know the exact reasons Satan would contend for Moses' body, some interpretations could be helpful. Desecration. Satan, always in opposition to God's plans, might have wanted to desecrate Moses' body. In doing so, he would not only dishonor the legacy of the great prophet, but also God himself. The very act of defiling what was sacred to God would be a symbolic victory for Satan. Idolatry. Moses was revered by the Israelites. Satan, ever cunning, may have seen the potential to turn Moses' body into an object of idolatry. By getting the Israelites to treat the body of Moses like something special to worship, he would lead them astray, turning their hearts from God and making them worship a mere object rather than the Almighty. However, Satan's intentions did not go unchallenged. The Archangel Michael, a mighty warrior of God, the defender of God's will and protector of the righteous, stood in defense of Moses' body. But even in the face of such a powerful adversary, Michael did not resort to curses or petty arguments. Instead, he responded with a powerful declaration that highlighted the ultimate authority of God. In those few words, Michael conveyed profound wisdom. He reminded Satan that it is not our place to decide or judge, but God's. The fate of Moses' body, like all things, rested in the hands of the Lord. The life of Moses teaches us many things. Faith, perseverance, leadership, and the intimacy of a relationship with God. But his death reminds us that even the greatest among us are ultimately in God's hands. And sometimes the mysteries he leaves behind are the most profound lessons of all. Moses' relationship with God. Moses shared an incredibly intimate relationship with God. This closeness is evident in various passages. Direct communication. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Exodus 33:11. This signifies a direct and personal relationship, unlike any other prophet at the time. As an intercessor, Moses often stood as an intercessor between God and the Israelites. When the Israelites sinned, Moses would plead on their behalf, and God listened. For instance, after the golden calf incident, Moses said, But now, please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you've written. Exodus 32, 32. This shows Moses' dedication and close relationship with God. Testimony of Resurrection Moses' appearance alongside Elijah and Jesus during the Transfiguration, Matthew 17, 1-3, suggests he was raised or translated to heaven. Satan might have wanted to prevent this to hinder the testimony of God's power over death. Symbol of the Law Moses represents the law. His body, as a symbol, would have been a significant trophy for Satan. By claiming Moses' body, Satan could attempt to claim authority or victory over the law. Accuser Satan, being the accuser, Revelation 12.10, might have tried to accuse Moses based on his sins. 
like striking the rock or killing the Egyptian, to claim his body. However, it's the grace of God that saves, not our own righteousness. In other words, Moses' unique relationship with God highlighted his importance in God's plan. The contention for his body by Satan might have been an attempt to thwart, discredit, or claim a symbolic victory against God's purposes. Moses' Leadership Moses' leadership was marked by several key characteristics. Faithfulness Moses consistently relied on God's guidance. Even when he felt inadequate, he trusted God's plan. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Exodus 3.11 Humility Despite being chosen by God, Moses remained humble. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Numbers 12.3 Obedience Moses followed God's instructions, even when they were challenging. He instituted the Ten Commandments and other laws as directed by God. Moses' strong leadership and his close relationship with God made him a significant figure in the biblical narrative. Satan, as an adversary of God and his people, would naturally seek opportunities to challenge or undermine God's plans. The contention for Moses' body can be seen as a direct challenge to the legacy and influence of a leader as pivotal as Moses. Moses' Faith Moses displayed immense faith throughout his life, from choosing to identify with the Hebrews rather than the Egyptian royalty, to trusting God to split the Red Sea and provide for the Israelites in the wilderness. Moses' faith was evident. However, like every human, Moses had his moments of doubt and disobedience, such as striking the rock instead of speaking to it as God commanded. Numbers 20, 8 through 12. Connection between Moses' faith and Satan's contention. Proof of spiritual realities. Just as Moses' faith demonstrated the reality of God's power and love, the contention for his body underscores the real spiritual battle between good and evil. The Value of the Righteous Moses was a key figure in God's plan for the Israelites, a precursor to Jesus in many ways. Satan, always opposing God's plans, might have sought to desecrate or misuse Moses' body to demoralize the Israelites or to distort God's purpose. A Foreshadowing of Resurrection some theologians speculate that the dispute over Moses' body might foreshadow themes of resurrection and the future battle over death. In the Transfiguration, Moses appears alongside Jesus, Matthew 17, 1-3, indicating that he is alive and well in the presence of God. The contention over his body could be seen as Satan's last attempt to claim victory over a servant of God, a victory he would never achieve. While the exact details of why Satan wanted Moses' body remain a mystery. The account serves as a potential reminder of the spiritual battles that occur beyond human perception. The story underscores the importance of faith, trust in God's sovereignty, and the need to be vigilant against the wiles of the enemy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today reminded of the story where Michael the archangel contended with the devil over the body of Moses. Just as there are unforeseen battles in the spiritual realms, Lord, we recognize that many of us face hidden struggles and challenges in our daily lives. We know, O oh God, that the enemy seeks to steal, kill, and destroy, but we also rest in the assurance that you came to give us life, and life more abundantly. John 10.10 10. We pray for strength, to stand firm against the adversaries and temptations that come our way. May we be reminded that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. 1 John 4.4 4. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and let us always be rooted in your word and your truth. We ask for your protection over our lives, our families, and our communities. As the enemy seeks to claim what belongs to you, let us be reminded of the victory we have in Christ. In moments of doubt and weakness, help us to exercise the authority we have in you. We surrender our anxieties, 
fears and uncertainties to you, trusting that you are working all things together for our good. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen.